Hey, level with me. Have you fallen recently? In this video, I'm gonna be talking about falling in the setting of MS, a super important topic oftentimes overlooked. Now don't turn away because all of that starts right now. Howdy! Thanks for learning about MS with me, Aaron Boster. Today's video is tackling an oftentimes overlooked topic in MS, falling. There's a really scary statistic that 70% of people with MS between the ages of 18 and 50 fall at least once a year. And they are more apt to become injured when they fall as compared to healthy controls. That's a startling statistic when you consider that the risk of falling goes up with age. And it's important that we're talking about falling as it relates to MS. So with that stated, let's jump in. For starters, I want to state that walking is actually a really complicated task. There are multiple different neurological systems involved in keeping you upright and walking without stumbling. The motor system, which you may think of as like strength, is a super important aspect of walking. Strong legs, strong butt, strong back, etc. And unfortunately, in the setting of MS, we can have weakness of a limb, causing a foot drop, or causing a weak hamstring or a weak hip. And if we're not careful, this can make us tumble. But that's not the only problem that can happen with the motor system. Spasticity is all too common in MS. Spasticity can cause a calf to cramp, or a leg to bounce, or a, a leg that won't bend. And obviously, this can interfere with walking. Also, people impacted by MS can develop motor fatigue, where when they start off on a promenade, they're doing fine. And as they walk, their leg or legs become weak and they have a risk of falling. There are other neurological systems that are very involved in keeping you upright. For example, the cerebellum and its connections are involved in balance. The balance centers both for your core when you're standing and when you're sitting and walking, and also for your limbs. And if the balance centers of your brain have been affected, it can interfere with your ability to stay upright and then you have a risk of tumbling. Similarly, the inner ear, the vestibular system, is the gyroscope in your head that, that tells you where you are in space. It can be affected in the setting of MS. I have many patients that suffer from vertigo where they feel like they're spinning, a huge risk for tumbling and falling over. Sensory systems are also involved in helping keep you upright because the sensation in your feet, and in specific, the angle of your ankle, helps your body know where it is in space. And that information goes up to the brain and tells you where you are so you don't fall over. If you have numb and tingly feet, you may not know where your foot is in space, and then you have a risk of falling. Lastly, thinking and memory is very much involved in walking and staying upright and not falling. And in the setting of MS cognitive fog or cognitive fatigue, we can have difficulty with motor planning. So my point here is it's no surprise that people impacted by MS have a higher risk of potentially falling down. Now let's turn our attention to what we can do to combat that. Real quick before we go on, if you like this video, would you please give it a thumbs up? Also, if you haven't yet subscribed to the channel, please consider doing so. Those two actions teach the YouTube algorithm that you like this content and help push it out so more people impacted by MS can benefit. Thank you. For starters, I want us to pay attention to the environment that you live in and where you spend your time. If your house is an obstacle course of boxes and clothes and pillows and toys, you may need to do some cleanup to create paths for safety. We can kick that up a notch and have an occupational therapist literally come into your home and do what's called a home safety evaluation, where they will go and do an assessment. And they may say, hey, that rug is a, a fall risk. It's slippery. We have to tape it down. And a railing right here would really, really help with safety, things like that. The next thing I want to think about after we assess the environment that we live in is what we can do to rehabilitate and to improve your own balance strength and making you fall resistant. We accomplish that not through a pill, but through physical therapy. Neurophysical therapy is magic for helping with ambulation. And that neurophysical therapist will assess which neurological problems are causing you to be at risk for falling, and they will work on that with you. Physical therapy is probably the most powerful tool to help you not fall over. Third, we need to think about assist devices. 
So an ankle foot orthosis so that your foot stays up and the uh, foot drop doesn't cause you to trip. A uh, cane, two canes or a walker. Now, a lot of my patients in clinic are resistant to using an assist device. And I understand that there's a degree of eh, having to take a cane with you when you go somewhere. But I would rather focus on the fact that they are being intelligent because they don't want to fall. And I'm more concerned about a stumble, God forbid, in a shattered hip than I am about the embarrassment of carrying a cane. And so we have to talk about using an assist device and using the appropriate assist device. There's a lot that goes into MS care and falling is something that we don't pay enough attention to. If you're falling, I ask you to please let your MS clinician know so that you can have a conversation and game out how to make it better. Now, if you'd like to learn more about balance and MS, click the video that's on your screen right now. And until my next Monday morning video or my next live stream, or even better yet, the next time I see you at the Boster Center for MS, this is Aaron Boster saying be safe and take care.